Hi and welcome back to the giant world of tiny things. My name is Maximilian and today I'd like to invite you to join me in the studio and create the refraction image that you're looking at right now. So what do we need for this image? Well, as usual, we're going to need a camera with a lens that has at least close focusing capabilities. It can be a macro lens, but it doesn't have to, as we're not really going to take advantage of the 1x magnification ratio in case your lens has it. All that really matters is that it gets close enough to fill the frame with your subject. And the subject is one that we're going to create from some copper wire um, that can be any kind of wire it doesn't even have to be copper wire let's be real here you just need some wire that is thin enough for you to bend it with your hands into a shape that you find optically pleasing and that allows you to place our main subject which are some water beads on that sculpture that we're going to create with the wire and these water beads are also known as orbeez and they can be picked up on ebay or amazon for really cheap you can get a color of your choice or you can get a bundle of mixed colors that's what i got and i really enjoy them as a creative subject and last but not least we're going to need a black vase ideally black it can be translucent or any color that you'd like it's just going to impact the final image so i like black because it's neutral and it absorbs most of the straight light and just makes for beautiful reflections but if you have a different color it doesn't really matter what matters for the vase however is that it is deep enough to submerge either an alligator clip or a laundry clip or just a piece of play-doh or whatever you have handy and want to use to hold your wire in place once we've got the wire in place we're going to fill up our vase with water until our contraption that's holding up the wire is completely submerged under the water surface and later on we're going to create a reflection which will hide that contraption completely. To make that reflection as dominant as possible try to get your camera perspective as low to the surface of the water and that helps to make the reflection much stronger and to hide the ground of your vase much better. But to create that reflection we need to stick something interesting into the background. In my case I'm using a photo of a flower but you can use any image or really anything that you'd like to use. That may be something three dimensional or it may just be an image that you get from a website like Pexels or any other royalty free stock image web page. Or you can just use a print of one of your own photos which makes the whole thing even more interesting and even more fun. Once you've decided on an image or on a backdrop Put it in place and then place your orbeez or your water beads on that wire sculpture that we just created and we're pretty much ready to shoot. The equipment that I'm using is a Canon 6D Mark II which just is a beautiful full frame camera that I enjoy a lot and the Canon 100mm f2.8 macro lens. I'm also using an off camera speed light that I connected to my camera with an hot shoe extension cord but you can really use any light source that you'd like to use because this is not about following a precise recipe and creating exactly the same image that I created. This is about feeling inspired and making it your piece of art and just doing your own thing and draw a bit of inspiration from this video. But one trick that I found to work really well is to shine your light source directly on the backdrop rather than illuminating the whole scene including your subject with it because that way the backdrop really pops and really comes through as a refraction inside those spheres that we're photographing and that just makes the image a lot more interesting and a lot more powerful and it will also help to draw your viewers I directly to those beats rather than have them wander around and I really enjoy the effect that you get from just shining your light onto the backdrop as it just helps putting the focus on the refraction that we are after. Now that's pretty much it for my setup and for the equipment that I used. Last but not least I'd like to point out that obviously the image that I've shown you in this video didn't look the way you saw it straight out of camera. There was a bit of post processing and retouching involved and one of the post processing techniques that I used is called focus stacking which is a technique where you combine multiple shots that were taken from the exact same position but at slightly varying focusing points into one overall super super sharp image and that allows us to enlarge the depth of field which always is rather shallow in macro photography. If that's a technique you're interested in please feel free to check out my tutorials on focus stacking in Adobe Photoshop and handheld focus stacking in the field which I link in the description below. If you're interested in my overall retouching and post-processing process to create macro images like this or this 
then let me know in the comments down below and I'll cover that in a future video. Until then, thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed today's content, please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel to get notified when my next video comes out. Until then, stay creative, keep shooting and have a good time. Bye.